ಶ್ರೀಮನ್ ವೆಂಕಟನಾಥಾರ್ಯ ಕವಿತಾರ್ಕಿಕೇಸರಿ ವೇದಾಂತಾಚಾರ್ಯವರ್ಯೋ ಮೇ ಸನ್ನಿಧತ್ತ ಸದಾ ಹೃದಿ ರಾಮಾನುಜದಯ ಪಾತ್ರ ಜ್ಞಾನವೈರಾಗ್ಯಭೂಷಣ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ವೆಂಕಟನಾಥಾರ್ಯ ವಂದೇ ವೇದಾಂತೇಶಿಕ ಶೀರೊನ್ನೃತೂಪುಲ್ ತಿರುವೆಂಗಡಮುಡಯಾನ್ ಪಾರೊನ್ನೃಚ್ಚೊನ್ನ ಪಳಮೊಳಿಳು ಊರೊನ್ನೃತಾನೇ ಅಮಯಾದೋ ತಾರಣಿಯಲ್ ವಾಳ್ವಾರ್ಕ್ ವಾನೇರ ಭೋಮಳವಂ ವಾಳ್ವ in the yesterday session on <coughs> ragasya navanitam the two shlokas from ramayana when how lakshmana showed us to do prapatti so we must be steadfast in doing charanagati we must not leave the protector away we will always hold him tight in our bosom and we will imprison him so that we will get the fruit of sharanagati namely sharanagati the total surrender is a summum bonum of what we do as total surrender the total surrender itself is the aim and total surrender itself is the goal and uh, in between of course we must understand lord is the goal lord is the means so he is means as well as the goal he is a path of progress and he is a destination so now again the next shloka let us read from page 42 under number 1 so that we will understand that these two shlokas also uh will corroborate the concept namely sharanagati now the second uh, quotation from ramayana from the ayodhya kanda 31st canto and 27th verse it is also said by lakshmana so both are the both are statements of only the same person namely lakshmana and we understand him by these two shlokas that he is a kainkarya shriman as a title given by accorded by the author of the ramayana of the adikavyam namely valmiki himself so he said to rama like this verse number 1 under the footnotes of page 42 ಭವಾಂಸ್ತು ಸಹ ವೈದೇಹ್ಯ ಗಿರಿಸಾನುಷು ರಂಸ್ಯತೆ ಅಹಂ ಸರ್ವ ಕರಿಷ್ಯಾಮಿ ಜಾಗ್ರತ ಸ್ವಪತಶ್ಚತೆ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಆಸ್ ಎನ್ ಆಪನೆಂಟ್ ಎ ಸ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ಟ್ ಸ್ಟೌಟ್ ಆಪನೆಂಟ್ ಟು ಇಂದ್ರಜಿತ್ ಹೂ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ದಿ ಬೂನ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಸ್ಕಿಂಗ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ದಟ್ a person who is 14 years awake should be only able to kill him vibhishan of course helped how he must be attacked where he must be attacked indrajit must be confronted by lakshmana vibhishan found out the secret that there is a nikumbala sacrifice being performed by indrajit after which he will have supreme power and he, he would be able to win over even rama lakshmana monkeys and all others or gods also along with so he, he will have a uh, usurping and uh, sweeping victory which will land him as the lord of the world so he said very uh, respectfully lakshmana said very respectfully so bhavans to 
यू बट भगवान सु रेस्पेक्टफुल यू टू बट टू बट इन देंस अट एनी कास्ट दट्स मीन इंडीड इज अ मीनिंग सह वैदेश्य नॉ दिस इज वेर देर इज अ स्मॉल चेंज इन मॉडिफिकेशन इन दर्ड ऑफ वाल्मीकि After Ravana abducted Sita, also Lakshmana served him. So it is not uh, um, because of the promise that now Lakshmana gives is when you are enjoying the forest life in the slopes of the mountains, Giri Sanusu. Sanusu is a slope, so Giri is mountain. So the Chitrakuta Giri, which we mentioned earlier, <coughs> he enjoyed a lot of natural phenomena, and the the scenery, the beautiful scenery that he was witnessing, all these were happily experienced by both Mahalakshmi's incarnation as Vaidehi and Lord Vishnu's incarnation as Ram. So Rama. And Vaidehi, so Vaidehi or Sah, along with Vaidehi, wherever you go and enjoy the slopes of the mountain, that means it was like a fourteen-year picnic. It's a pastime outside Ayodhya. So he said, "Aham sarvam karishyam." I will do whatever you want. I will do whatever you think in your mind. i will do what intention that you have got in your heart even i can understand my brother's wife's heart so that whatever she wants whatever she requires i will be able to help her in uh, getting things done so aham sarvam karishya so after the moment after which uh, ravana abducted sita Uh, Lakshmana started serving more Rama because Rama was in a sad state. Now the sad state of the mind of Rama is also, according to many, when we read Rama in a philosophically, it's a it's an act. It's an act. It's a rather false act. and uh, pining for the wife separation on pining on the wife separation he is also a drama enacted by rama but still as a story we must look at it naturally as a human being as we are so he said the lakshmana said jagrataha when you are awake even when you are awake you need lot of help in order to visit the sages hermitages sarabhanga atri vasishta vishwamitra uh, agastya sutikshna so many sages have been visited by rama bharadwaja and all help will be extend, extended to you by me in uh, reaching your goals jagrataha while you are awake and uh, as a king belonging belonging to a royal family he is also supposed to engage uh, the sages in the forest in the fire rituals rama has to sponsor sponsor those fire rituals therefore in all the fire rituals to be Sponsored by Rama, Lakshmana assured him that he will help, and also while sleeping, swapataha cha the. So while you sleep and while you are awake, that means twenty-four by seven, fourteen years into twenty-four by seven. So you please remember fourteen into three hundred and sixty-five into twenty-four by seven. So uh, totally, I will be he- helpful. I will never sleep. I will. I will be awake, 
and help you to con conduct life along with Vaidehi. The word Vaidehi is especially a name here relevant and Valmiki uses a lot of epithets for any, any character and uh, everywhere in the particular context Valmiki is very clever, shrewd in using a particular term. Vaidehi. She is the daughter of the kingdom called Videha. Videha meaning Deha means body as we know. As we say, our body is also called Deha. Tanuhu, Vapuhu, Shariram. So many words. So you have Deha meaning body. Videha meaning with the special body or without body. In the sense, so uh, this refers to especially Janaka's attitude. Janaka was another king like Vishwamitra. <coughs> In our history of Purana, we hear only two Rajarishis. One is Vishwamitra, the other is Janaka. Janaka had the great quality of being a sage Simultaneously as he was a king. So he is called Raja Rishi. He was a detached man. He had no attachment to the properties of this world. And uh, he is, uh, the very name is, suggests that he is a father. Janaka meaning father. One who creates. You can also call Brahma as Janaka. And you can call Lord Vishnu as Janaka of Brahma. Father of Brahma. So Vaidehi, the very word suggests that the king of the kingdom Videha is always detached with the kingdom. The same attitude has been developed in the daughter also. Vaidehi is also without attachment. Now though the attachment is not with, referring, with reference to the individual soul's love, no. But the, the attachment refers to the various activities of the world where good and bad things are involved. In fact, we can say whatever qualification that Lord Vishnu has, what he possesses, he is also reflected in the same degree in Mahalakshmi, we call her, that is what we call Aprakrita Thirumeni, a supernatural figure, plus no attachment to the sins or bad activities of the world. Namely, the word special that I want to mention here is Apahata Papma. Apahata Papma. No sin can attach itself to the Lord as, as well as Mahalishmi. No sin can accrue. No sin can touch. They are not attached to any types of bad activities of the world. For example, I'll also tell you the another term which can make you make, make us understand a little more clear. Namely, no rajas and no tamas. No belligerent quality, no haughtiness, no pride, no insolence, no possessiveness, no egoism. So all these are absent in both the divine couple. And therefore, uh, since Sita is not affected by any of the incidents in Ramayana, but still she also acts as though she is affected. She is influenced. And uh, we were discussing yesterday how Sita uh, hides her form and Vedavati is abducted by Ravana. Again, Vedavati enters into the fire in Sri Lanka 
and again Sita comes out unscathed from the fire god. So philosophically speaking, so Vaidehi, though physically present in the world of Ramayana, she is not present, she is absent. So now in the presence and absence of Vaidehi, Rakshana assures Rama that he will serve. He will be a sincere servant, faithful servant with what you call loyalty. Naturally, it is expected of Lakshmana to do service all the time to both the divine couple because he is the incarnation of Adishesha. Basically, we can remember that also. The word Adishesha itself, as, as we all understand very easily, the first servant, the foremost slave. Therefore, whether it is a command of the master or it is an intention of the master to be understood by what you call ingitam, sometimes by signal, sometimes by uh, hand expressions, some, sometimes by gesture, sometimes by what you call um, tel telepathy. So by telepathy, Lakshmana can understand what Rama thinks and he does what he expects him to do. So this is uh, the essence of a yeah, person. Though, though Rama did not surrender to Lakshmana in order to go to the forest for 14 years, he did not seek help from uh, Lakshmana. But Lakshmana voluntarily came up and that is what we are supposed to do as, as Sri Vaishnava in our, as said in Sampradaya. Suppose you see somebody in distress, somebody needs help, we go voluntarily and help. Sometimes today if in this world, if we say that we, we must not extend help to a person who did not seek help, that's right. But uh, never our help goes a waste. We get all merits of our help to others. And uh, two or three shades of uh, um, meaning is there in doing help. Suppose I help others, I must forget what help I extended to others. And if I am helped by others, I must remember to my, the end of my life that who helped me and how he how they helped me. And in return, we will have to help back. And as a man who helps others, will not should not expect anything in return from those who received help from us. These are all certain shades of uh, what we call uh, Sharanagati. So without being now the one example how Lama saved a bird without uh, the bird itself coming down and falling at the feet of either Sita or Rama is the crow. The crow, Jayanta, the son of great Indra, god of gods, come and prick the chest region of Sita while Rama was reclining and sleeping over the lap of Sita. This is a very great illustration of a secret happening between Hanuman and Sita in Sri Lanka in order to recognize that Hanuman is the faithful servant of Rama. A stranger must be recognized. It is not possible to talk with a wrong I mean, a number which we are not familiar in either phone or WhatsApp. We are not to answer the phone, phone call, because we do not know the person. So in order to get introduced to Sita, Hanuman uh, gives the illustration. Because Rama told him earlier. And the crow According to Alvar, it went to all the worlds 
including its own father indra he asked for shelter from the father he refused and all other gods could not protect him therefore and it is only sorry swami vedanta dishika says elai todi vilum kaagam pol elai todi vilum kaagam pol because of tiredness because of the fatigue of travel to all the world the crow fell down about a few feet away from either sita or rama and because it committed a fall fault rama had to punish him but punishment was not severe that is the that is the attitude of expected of a sri vaishnava when somebody does harm to us so we must not retaliate by same by paying the same coin whereas we must forgive him forget him forget his fault and embrace him as a friend so in order that minor punishment should be given the crow was um cursed to be rather um, crow was attacked by with the, through the one eye the brahmastra um chanted by taking a, a small blade of grass nearby took away one vision one one eye's vision and uh, fortunately the crow was left free uh, with the soul intact it it uh, it was alive it was not killed so this is what we call the mercy of lord rama here when he did not protect i mean uh, the crow because the crow surrendered to him so nor the crow uh, fell at the feet of sita so that is the beauty of the principle taught by rama to all the human beings like us so let us go to the page 42 the molam text so so lakshmana's statement now again i am um, uh, try to give you another interpretation where when i when i said rama did not surrender to lakshmana rama did not ask for love help from lakshmana as a shri vaishnava we can also offer help voluntarily to anybody or to any organization uh, as uh, as a whole some help which they need directly and without expecting any reward for the help that we expect so without being asked without being surrendered to as a human human being a shri vaishnava may help if there is no harm waiting for it waiting for the same so a harmless help a help which will not be misunderstood misconstrued one can always extend so lakshmana being very close to rama as the சென்றால் குடையாம் இருந்தால் சிங்காக நமாம் நின்றால் மரவடியாம் ஆதிசேஷம் நியூ வெரி வெல் க்ளோஸ்லி நித்தியசூரி ஆஃப் த லார்ட் ஸோ ஹி அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் ஆல் தி குவாலிட்டிஸ் ஆஃப் த லார்ட் ஹி இஸ் நாலஜபிள் அபவுட் தி நேச்சர் ஆஃப் த லார்ட் சூப்பர் நேச்சுரல் குவாலிட்டி ஆஃப் த லார்ட் அண்ட் தேர் ஃபார் ஹி எக்ஸ்டெண்டட் ஹெல்ப் பை ஹிம் செல்ஃப் these two shlokas will tell us how he was uh, adamant in serving the lord in spite of some expectation of rejection of his service so ivatil thondina paramahitathinudaya adhikara nairapeksha swarupa prabhavangalayum now 
we understand now the, please remember the main topic abhaya pradana abhaya pradana is called a fruit of sharanagati a protection is extended by someone who can uh, uh, who is a savior who can save us from trouble but we are talking about the sharanagati itself so abhaya pradana is a fruit of some sharanagati so we are talking of sharanagati here total surrender so total surrender is always favorable the most favorable paramahitam that's what we saw in page 40 and therefore paramahitatnode then then you have some categories of the sharanagati's thought what adhikara that is b Nairapeksha C, Swarupa D, Prabhava C. So Adhikara right R I G H T. So who is the Adhikari? Who has got the right to, to do so total surrender? Who invests the right in you to do Saranagati? Adhikara. Nairapeksha, what are the things that you should not expect by Saranagati? Why, how you should be indifferent toward the goals of, toward the fruits of Saranagati. Then Swarupa, how do you understand the natural form of the Lord? How do you understand yourself as an individual soul in relation with the Supreme Soul? Prabhava, the power of both. What is the power of the individual soul? What is the power of the Supreme Soul? What is the power of Sharanagati and what does it yield as an end result? So these all the four are explained in the coming pages through Charama Shloka. So we were talking about Dvaya earlier. Sriman Narayana Charano Sharanam Prapadye Srimate Narayana Maha. So that what that was called the Paramahitam and the Bhogyam and so on. So the two sentences, I think with the 12 words each, 12, 12 words, 12 words, totally 12 words. Uh, and uh, those words are Paramahitam as we say, saw earlier. Now you understand, Charama Shlokam is the Paramahitam. Charama Shloka, Shloka, the verse Charama is final. The final verdict of Lord Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita, 18th chapter. So that explains what we now see here as Sharanagati as the most favorable means to realize God, the right to do it, the people who have the right to do it, what are the things that we must avoid, how should we understand the natural form of both the Supreme Soul and the individual soul? And the, what are the greatnesses of everything, including Sharanagi? So, Charama Shloka Til, Moonru Vakyangalil, Adaiwe, Adhikari Krityamum, Sharanya Krityamum, Krita Krityanade, Uttara Krityamum, Anusandhayam. It's a very big topic now. The word Charma Shloka itself, as you know, easily, Sarva Dharma, Paritya Mamekam Charanam Raja, Hantva Sarva Pape Pyo, Moksha Ishami, Masu Jaha. So you have sentences. So how many sentences as it is given as three? Sarva Dharma, Paritya Mamekam Charanam Raja, one sentence. The, the first half of the Charama Shloka has got one sentence. The first sentence Sarvadharman Parityajya Maam Ekam Sharanam Braja. <coughs> then, second sentence is Sarvadharman Parityajya Maam Ekam Sharanam Braja. Aham Twa Sarva Pape Pyo Moksha Ishyami. This is the second sentence. Third sentence is Ma Suchaha. Third sentence is a shortest sentence with just two words. 
मां सुचा डोंट बाधर डोंट वरी so that is this is your easy meaning whereas the first two sentences are little long and the first half itself is a single sentence so the first part of the single sentence of, uh, in the first half says what a surrender he should do what he is expected to do is sarva dharman parityajya and the last word is raja sharanam raja make a total surrender so these are these are the activities expected of a surrender in namely an individual soul to fall at the feet of the lord so sarva dharman parityajya sharanam raja go to do surrender by giving up the fruits of all your activities that's the meaning of sarva dharman parityajya give up the fruit of the activities that means don't think of the advantages of doing the activities what you call dharma forget about them and remember only the lord's divine feet so go to surrender sharanam raja so whom to surrender when to surrender how to surrender is given by mam ekam mam ekam so first do surrender to mahalakshmi mam ma is mahalakshmi mother mam then the ekam don't think that mahalakshmi and i are different from each other so mahalakshmi and mahavishnu are in one unit He, they are a divine couple they are called in single word term single term in sanskrit dampati divya dampati divine couple they are inseparable to each other she is anapayini so remember that first you surrender to goddess mahalakshmi and then to me so we look at uh, superficially different entities two personalities no we are one and the same so if you surrender to mahalakshmi it is as if or as equal to doing surrender to me if you surrender to me that that means you are also surrendering to mahalakshmi uh, i think in contractual agreements Uh, we have a last line like this namely uh, in future whatever be the rules it will be followed by you there is no there is no mention there <coughs> if one rule is applicable to one context the same rule is applicable to another context also they mention in the agreement so this will apply to all the situations so in that way mahalakshmi and mahavishnu are to be approached by the first sentence now we have next sentence second sentence aham tva sarva papebhyo moksha ishyam sorry in the first sentence also we understand adhikari krityam a man with a right to surrender has got a duty to perform so that is mentioned in the first sentence g g it is given uh, that uh, script so adhikari krityam is the duty of the rightful person to do surrender he is mentioned in the first sentence namely of the charma shloka sarva dharman parityajya sharanam raja of course sarvadharman parityajya sharanam raja is a command instruction advice guidance given by the lord but still it should be taken as a rule it's an order so let me do we must add it as let me forget about the fruits of my activities 
and I must go to surrender. So I must realize that this should be the meaning of the first sentence. So Adhikari Kritya. And again, what are the activities I am supposed to do, perform? And what are the fruits of activity that must, I must reject? And how do we go to surrender? And when we surrender, to whom do we surrender? So these are all that what we call the duties of a rightful person to do surrender. So he has a lot of the uh, what is called expectations. Then Sharanya Kritya. Lord himself says these words as an order. So Maam Ekam Sharanam Raja, please surrender to me. First Mahalakshmi and me, both of them together, both of us together. So here Sharanya Kritam is there. So in the second sentence, you find more uh, uh, Sharanya Kritam, namely, Aham Tva Sarva Pape Bhyo Moksha Isha. When the word Aham is there, Aham includes Mahalakshmi. So Aham Sarva Pape Bhyo Moksha Isha. I will relieve you from all kinds of sins. All negative effects of your activities will be nullified. It will become not. It will become zero. And I will protect you. So, aham twa sarva pape bhyo. Twa. Twa you. So, I will relieve you from all the sins. Aham twa sarva pape bhyo. Moksha is Shami. Now the word Moksha is Shami is what we call in future tense. That it doesn't happen today. Today evening he is not giving a release from sins. But tomorrow. Why tomorrow? A lot of time is given to us in between so that we must make up our mind to give up the fruits of or advantages of our activity called dharma. And then we must surrender practically at the feet of the Lord with, uh, the, her, with his consort, divine consort, Mahalakshmi. And then only I will relieve you from all sins. Aham Tva Sarva Pape Bhyo Moksha Isha. So then you have no go, uh, uh, thinking of going back on your concept. So once you decide, this is what we have in the Sharanagati limbs, the, uh, the limbs of Sharanagati, the angas of Sharanagati, namely the uh, parts of Sharanagati. The first one is helplessness. We call it Akinchanyam or Karpanyam. It's called helplessness. Kai mudal illamai. Tamil is kai mudal illam. That means I cannot protect myself. I am not capable of saving myself and so on. And you have pratikulya varjanam. So avoiding the don'ts of the scriptures. The scriptures say don't do this, don't do that. So all that is strictly followed by us. So pratikulya varjanam. So we avoid the negative aspects of uh, the Shastras which they advise us. And next is Anukulya Sankalpaha. We make up our mind. We decide to do whatever has been ordained to do as an injunction of the scriptures. So do this, do that. So all these are all followed meticulously by us. So, Anukulya Sankalpaha. Then comes to this stage. Then we come to this stage. We may be choose the protector. When we choose the protector, which God we would come to our rescue quickly or permanently? <clears throat> there are gods who can solve our problems quickly. But, the, but later, the immediate solution to the problem begets a trouble. And therefore, so let us have no side effect of the medicine that we take inside. 
that means we are not to approach any other god except lord narayana and mahalakshmi so we understand that our kritya madhikari kritya means maam ekam charanam raja only one alone can be approached and that one is shriman narayana so sharanya kritya is there then finally when lord assures don't worry don't bother uh, chinta mastu chinta mat karo so krita kritya nudiye uttara kritya so after getting our uh, goals uh, fulfilled in the sense uh, we have to made a total surrender so we have completed the surrender we have given up the fruits of the activities all fruits of all activities so sarva dharman parityajya i have come to that stage i finished all my activities by without expecting any fruits thereof so i surrendered to the lord then after surrendering to the lord uh, our attitude that we must not expect anything from the lord as an advantage of fruit or fruit of my total surrender and then what should i do next sakradeva prapannaya the charma shloka of sri rama avatar here please remind yourself so i did surrender once then what should i do what next uttara kritya ho so i got a duty to perform afterwards there is some duty waiting after uh, this sharanagati uh, and this this four a g h i j are contained in the three sentences so after uh, lord assured us ma suchaha don't bother we must uh, think of <coughs> what instructions are given by the scriptures further after total surrender so here adhikarika kritya mahavad so these two three things are rather four g h i j adhikarika krityam charanya krityam krita krityam uttara krityam so all these are being now started i mean is being are being explained by uh, the from the next sentence adhikarika kritya mahavad so what should we understand as our duty adhikari is the rightful person so i am the rightful person i want to think that i i i think that i am a rightful person but i am not so i must be qualified fully to become a rightful person so what should i do to do what you call make surrender sharanam raja how do you, how do i go to uh, fall at the feet of the lord with what qualifications so memberul ityadi elpadi so we will take up the uh, footnote number 2 and it is in tamil and it is a quotation from tondaradipudi alvars divya prabandham called tirumal so what should we do so let me read the ma'am meaning first embermane so embermane lord shivan narayana is addressed at which place of archavatara shirangam shulpunal arangattani last line shulpunal arangattani the water is in plenty the water is sufficient and lot of groves are there lot of trees are there lot of parks are there lot of bushes are there and therefore shul punal arangattani the peculiar feature of uh, shirangam temple is all the other temples have got only one tank called pushkarni of water whereas this has got two one is called chandra pushkarini the other is called surya pushkarini chandra pushkarini is on the north side of the lord just before ranganayika the goddess mahalakshmi and 
Surya Prakrani is just in front of the Lord near uh, Garuda Sani. So it is of course in those days there were water water in full and uh, today it is dry. In uh, the Pushkarini is Pushkarini. Pushkarini meaning a uh, water tank which has got full of water. So sure now uh, at least uh, the Arvars uh, imagine and visualize that everything is positive. The, the beauty of the uh, place, holy place is intact. They are rich in nature and so on. So, Shurpunal Arangatani. Last line, last word. Shurpunal Arangatani. So, Sri Ranganatha is being addressed by Thirumalai, Thirumalai namely Tondradi Puriyadvar. So, we have a proverb about Thirumalai. If you want to understand Lord Mahavishnu, please read 48 verses of Thirumalai. Don't miss them. Out of the 4,000 Divya Prabandhas of 12 apostles of Sri Vaishnavism, please do not miss to read 48, namely Thirumalai. Thirumalai Ariyadar, Thirumalai Ariyadar. Those who do not know the 48 verses, those who do not study the 48 verses of Thirumalai, will not be able to understand who Thirumal is, who Lord Vishnu is. Now, what should you do? Mem Purul Pohavit, the first line. Mem Purul Pohavit. Mem Purul, in the sense, flimsy aims. Mem Purul does not mean here a highest uh, goal, highest object, but it is uh, flimsy, blade like uh, objects. <coughs> So, we call them worldly pleasures. So, Mayamburul is worldly pleasures. Now, why we, why we call, why Tandadipudi Alvar, otherwise called in Sanskrit, Bhakta Angri Renu, Bhakta Tondar, devotee, Angri the foot, Renu the dust. So, Podi, the powder on the feet of the devotees. So, he is called the, uh, with what we call, the most humble name, Tondaradi Pudi, Bhaktangri Ren. So he, he, he says, uh, because he had a first bad background, then he became a good person because of the grace of Ranganatha. So he was uh, corrected. We have uh, Arvar's statement. Um, Amara Rahilum, Pangala Rahilum, Nandraha Tiriti Panikulwar. So, Lord will always correct us when we go wrong and uh, He will make us do service to Him. Ulaha Bogangali, in the pleasures of the world, Adiyod Ashi Vitu. Let us reject, let us avoid, let us uh, refuse to enjoy the pleasures of this world. Pohavit, let us ignore, let us be away from the pleasures of the world. Then may may we have unandu. Now we will understand what truth is, what eternal truth is. First we understand our own soul in relation with the Supreme Soul. We say that we are helpless. That is the first step of total surrender. So let us understand that we are limited in uh, power. We are not Vibhu. We are not pervading the whole world. We are Anu. We are atomic in nature. We cannot be everywhere at any time. So we have all limitations. Then we have all the bad qualities, Rajas and Tamas, the, the pride and the uh, ignorance. So there is all these are all certain major differences between the individual soul and the supreme soul. So Atma in Sarupati Arindu. So may may we must understand practically the truth. 
what we are and am parish arindu gund then we, in tamil it is also said that sam tam swarupathukku etra matra vishayangalaiyum arindu gund we must also understand matters related to us and relevant to our figure as we are living in this world many things happen around us and we are to be aware of all the surrounding happenings so we must be a, possessing a general knowledge of what happens around us and so am parish arindu kondu we must also understand when we involve ourselves deeply into the world affair the result we must understand the results also we must be aware of the results of involving ourselves deeply into the mundane activities of the world and then aim bolana hat adaki ahat adaki so put all your five sense organs inside the box ஐந்து இந்திரியங்களையும் வெளியே செல்லாமல் அடங்கி எதர் யூ கண்ட்ரோல் தெம் ஆர் தே கெட் தெம் செல்ஸ் கண்ட்ரோல் மேக் தெம் கண்ட்ரோல் பை தெம் செல்ஸ் ஆர் யூ ஸ்டாப் தெம் ஃப்ரம் கோயிங் அவுட் யூ ஸ்டாப் தெம் ஃப்ரம் கோயிங் அவுட் டு என்ஜாய் மோர் அண்ட் மோர் த்ளஷர்ஸ் ஆஃப் திஸ் வேர்ல்ட் so uh, try to contain them into your heart and the heart must the mind should work so that the five sense organs is all uh, not active then ahankara mamakarangalai vittu that is also included under that namely while controlling the sense organs we must give up heartiness we must shed the egoism kaambu ara thalai siraithu un kadai thalayil irundhu vaalum sombare ugathi polum shulbunal arangathaane now uh, it seems as though tandadi uh, padiyalvar criticizes the devotees who come and wait for worship of, of lord of shirangam but it is called what we call vyaja ninda is an apparent censure is an apparent censure actually he is praising the lord so they are all at the door people are or many people are at the door entrance waiting for its opening to have a darshan of sri ranganatha they are standing as though they are the gods jaya vijaya chanda prachanda and so on and uh, they are waiting 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 they have no other activity to perform they don't go home they they uh, they look like what we call lazy fellows see so he calls tandadi priyalwar calls those devotees as lazy fellows those who are those who are have escaped from the household they go to the temple wait for the opening of the doors in the temple so he said he said to the lord he asked to the lord unakke ettagaya ugap அகங்கார மமகாரங்களை விட்டு உன் திருவாசலில் காவலராக நின்று வாழும் சோம்பேறிகளிடம் உனக்கு எத்தகைய உகம் ஐ அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் வெரி ஒண்டர்ஃபுல்லி தட் யூ ஹாவ் ஓ லார்ட் யூ ஹாவ் ஃபிலியல் அஃபெக்ஷன் யூ ஹாவ் காட் ஃபேசினேஷன் ஃபார் பீப்புள் ஹூ ஆர் ஐடல் ஹூ ஆர் லேசி either sitting or standing or living perhaps living perhaps living in near the door as though they are the sentries of the entrance 
as though they are policemen at the entrance. And of course, they have no egoism and they have no possessiveness. And waiting for the archaka, the priest, to open the doors so that they can have the darshan of the Lord. So waiting is a pleasure for them. They don't have egoism and sense of possession. And they look like the protectors of the Lord while standing as a watchman at the door. At the same time, it looks as to me as though they are doing nothing and therefore they are lazy people. But uh, he says, Lord Sriman Narayana, Lord Ranganatha, expect them, such people, to arrive at the gate, wait for him, and he is happy that the lazy people have no ahankara and mahaka, the sense of egoism and sense of possession. They have no pride, they have no madness, they have no greed, they have no uncouth desire. They have no wrong ambition. They have no unnecessarily angry. anger. No anger. They have no anger. No fury. These are the qualities that are expected of a devotee, especially a Sri Vaishnava, where the Lord loves them. Unakki ettakhe ukham. The word somber, the somber meaning lazy people, it's a positive term, it's a what we call appreciating term instead of a derogatory term. That is the beauty in Tundradi Pudi Adva, Thirumale. And Thirumale looks as though pessimistic. Most of them are pessimistic. But they are, according to what we call the different alankaras, it became it becomes uh, positive thinking that we must understand deeply that he is talking of the definition of a devotee. So these people, so-called lazy people, as said by Tondadi Pariyarvar. They don't engage themselves in any activity of this world. Very wishing a little bit of a ember monitor me, you do whatever hurt, somber and a pattern. Just now I told you 24 in, into 7 into 365.25 and many years. They have been engaging their, their mind totally in the Lord, that, that they never tend to forget. They never do anything else other than activities related to God, unrelated to God. So such a person is negatively for joke called humorous, for human called Shombar and a pattern. So Tirumali 38, gives us the, what we call, Adhikari Kritiyam, the duty of a rightful person to surrender. So you can have a list of the activities that we are expected to do as a surrendering. Let us not engage deeply into the pleasures of the world. Give up the whole, entire desire. Understand one's own individual soul, its weakness, its helplessness, its limitations, its activities, its attachment to the bad qualities like Rajas and Tamas. It has no, I mean, it has possessions, there are no possessive sense, it has no egoism. So, so then, Give up all the activities related to the individual soul's nature. 
and uh, stop the five sense organs from going away, drifting away from the mind uncontrollably. So then we become the qualified, the best qualified surrendery or doing total surrender to Sriman Narayana and Mahalakshmi. The very word, of course, Sriman Narayana itself says, Sri Man Narayana, she is Mahalakshmi. So Sri Man, so always associated with Mahalakshmi. So Sriman Narayana is the uh, means as well as the goal of the total surrender. The total surrender itself is the, is the means and end itself. Let us not expect anything more from the Lord. Ramanu Jadaya Patram Jnana Vairagya Bhushanam Shri Madhveng Katanatharyam Bande Vedanta Deshikam Kavitarki Kasimhaya Kalyana Gunashalini Shri Mate Venkateshaya Vedanta Gurave Namaha Shri Runrutu Pul Tiruvengada Mudayan Parunra Chonna Pajamoyul Urunrutane Amayado Taranil Varvarke Vanera Pomalavum Varve Om Namo Narayanaya Om Namo Narayanaya Om Namo Narayanaya